Greetings, Top Hat Runner here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to put G-Hop into your guns. Now this is going to be a bit of a lengthy video because G-Hop is just a time-consuming process. It's really not difficult, but it takes a while, and I went ahead and left in my entire process from start to finish of working on this so you guys can see everything I do and, you know, not really get stuck at any point. I am going to edit times into the video that you can skip ahead to to skip out the tedious parts of modifying this, though, so you can skip around a bit. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask, though. This is a very, very important modification for performance because, I mean, I've gone up against Polar Stars at the field, and if your Polar Star is running a stock hop-up bucking, I really don't care what you do to your gun. If you're running a stock hop-up bucking, pretty much anything with a special uh, hop-up like G-Hop or R-Hop is just going to outshoot you at long range. I mean, really, that hop-up mods are how you get good performance. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I don't like Polar Stars, that they're, they're, that they're a waste of money or anything. They definitely have a lot of pros, but if you really want performance and get a Polar Star and a G-Hop, then you're going to be, you know, best gun on the field. Now, also, if you're kind of on the fence about G-Hop, it might look intimidating, but it's really easy. I've never messed up a G-Hop. I got it right the first time and every time I've ever made one, so just go for it. But first off, two real quick shoutouts. First goes out to Disguised Airsofter for teaching me all about airsoft hop-up mods. Second shoutout goes to Tank the Tanks, who I'm primarily making this video for. And they both make really awesome airsoft videos. There'll be a link to their channels in the video description. Be sure to check them out. But now on to G-Hop itself. What is G-Hop? G-Hop is, uh, runs on the same principle as R-Hop, that more contact time between your BB and your hop-up is more range and accuracy, which I have done this many times in many of my guns. I always get good results out of G-Hop when I use a good outer bucking. More on that later. This hop-up mod is better than, it's kind of like in order from worst to best hop-up, there's stock hop-up buckings, which is just a normal hop-up bucking, flat hop, G hop, R hop, extended R hop. That same order also goes from easiest to most difficult. So G hop is kind of in the middle as far as installation goes. It's really not nearly as hard as R hop or as time consuming. It's really not that difficult and it gets you pretty good performance. So first off, what you're gonna need for this modification is a nice sharp like exacto knife or box cutter. You're going to need a toothpick and super glue for getting contact patch onto your barrel later on. And you're going to need two buckings. And I recommend for the outer bucking a G&G &G hop up bucking. And for the contact patch, I'm gonna recommend a bit of Prometheus hop up rubber. You can use whichever buckings work for you. For the outer bucking, just get something with good compression that gets you, you know, a good air seal with your air nozzle, consistent FPS, high FPS, that kind of thing. And it doesn't have to actually be, you know, a very effective hop-up rubber itself because it's not going to come in contact with the BB. And for your contact patch, just use whichever hop-up rubber you get good results from, you know, just like a really good hop-up flight path. For me, I prefer Prometheus. I'd actually recommend Prometheus for the contact patch and outer bucking, but the G&G &G bucking really works just as well and it's about half the cost. So now we're going to get on to actually making the G-Hop. First thing you're probably going to want to do is take your outer bucking and get it inside out. This is not very difficult to do. Just kind of put it on the end of your barrel like so. Just roll it up. You're just trying to flip this inside out so you can cut off parts of the inside of the bucking. Just keep working with this until it's completely inside out. Might use an Allen key. Just kind of push it through. And there you now have your bucking inside out. Go ahead and put this on the end of your barrel so it holds it steady. Now what you're going to need to do to modify this is cut off this little ridge on the bottom here and the little lump on the top. You're going to have to make this bucking completely smooth explain why later. Just be sure not to cut through the bucking. You don't want to create any holes. So just get your knife out and start working on this little ridge back here. This does take some time and some precision, so it's really not difficult, but it does take a bit of time.
And there you have it. It doesn't have to be smooth, but it does have to be flat. You don't want like any lumps or mounds. I'll explain why later. Now for this last little bit here, so just do the same thing you did the side of it. Be careful not to cut your fingers. You shouldn't be cutting towards yourself like I am, but if you do, be very careful. You are working with a very sharp knife. Or I'm hoping you're working with a very sharp knife, otherwise this is going to be very difficult. So as you can see, we got most of the bucking off, but that's not quite good enough. So we're going to get a relatively fine file here. Just kind of shave it down some more. Just keep working on it until you get it flat. What also works really well is some very fine sandpaper. I'll go get some of that. Fine sandpaper seems to work better than files of taking material off hop-up rubbers. I'm not really sure why, but... This is 250 grit I'm using right now. Now, I probably should have warned you about this earlier, but <clears throat> try not to rough up the smooth side of your bucking here. You're going to want to keep that a little smooth. It's not very important since we're working with G-Hop instead of R-Hop, but you just want to get back this material here. The reason I, okay, one warning or something is when you're cutting, don't actually like push with the knife, just move it. Just let the blade of the knife cut. Don't need to actually like put any pressure on it. Actually cuts better if you just kind of like rub the blade along it. See, like I started cutting into the bucking there, but I didn't go through, so that's not a problem. You got a little bit of leeway in your hop-up rubber material, so it's not like really risky. It's fairly easy to do, it just takes time. A little delicate work. I've got my 400 grit sandpaper, which might not be necessary, but it does work pretty good at removing pop-up rubber material. Okay, so that should be smooth enough now. As you can see, it's relatively flush with the bucking. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to make it so that it'll fit into your hop-up chamber. So, get this back right side out the same way you got it inside out. Just by rolling up the ends of the bucking here and getting that Allen key, pushing the rest of this through. And there you have it. Now go ahead and put this on the end of your bucking. I guess it does kind of... I don't know if I can get my camera to focus. This camera never focuses on what I want it to. But anyway, it's smooth enough, it'll be able to fit back into your hop-up chamber. So, your outer bucking's done. We can always shave more off, but you can't put back on. If you cut a hole in it, you need a new bucking. Or you don't, it really depends how much of a stickler for compression you are, but if you don't have a good outer bucking on here, you got holes in it, you're really going to notice some very inconsistent hop in your G-Hop. Now it's time for the contact patch. First off, it's going to be about the same length of this window, so kind of measure about how far it is. Because, like I've been saying, you can always take off, but you can't add more on. Can't add more on. <laughs> How'd you, do you get it? Did, never mind. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, that should be about right. 
right. Try and cut this as straight along the side of the bucking as you can. Just push down really hard, slide it a little bit forward and backward, just a little bit until it cuts through. You should get a pretty straight cut. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to measure this. Like I said, we're just cutting it down to size now. We're not really, like, getting it to be the right width yet. Now you see, I don't have to measure a lot because I've done this quite a few times. I got the eye for it, but if this is your first time, definitely be getting out a ruler or something. Measure a few times before you cut. Because if you cut too much off, you're just, you're done. There's not much you can do about it. You gotta start over. Okay, so, now this is the outer portion of our outer portion. In other words, we still have a little bit more to cut off this, but this is the general idea. See the beginning. Try and find the side that has the straightest cut. Okay, this side looks like it's the straightest cut. I usually put it forward, but it doesn't really make a difference. Now is when you start to measure. You're going to want this to fit into your hop-up window as full as you can get it. Get out your ruler. Want this like try and cut this as straight as you can get it. Doesn't really have to be like absolutely perfect, but try and get it as perfect as you can. I said push down really hard. Move it forward and backward slowly. Just keep working at it until it cuts through your bucking. You should get a relatively straight cut. We're going to put this on the bucking and that's pretty good. I think I might need to shave off a little bit more. Yeah, I need to take off a tiny bit more. Like I said, I'm doing this by eye because I've done it a bunch of times, but I highly recommend that you measure it. And that looks like a pretty good contact patch. Don't have the straightest cut in the world on it, but it's not incredibly important. Next thing we're going to do is cut off a little bit more so that, kind of like when you set it in here, this side of the bucking, this is the side of the contact patch, kind of sits right along the edge of the hop-up chamber window. Let's wait for my camera to focus here. So this side will sit like that. I need to cut a little off this side so it'll also sit like just right in the chamber. This side here looks like it's got a smoother edge than this side, because it's a little cut out there. You really don't have to be as exact as I make it sound like, but just try and be as exact as possible. It's a nice thing why a flexible ruler comes in handy. It's not going to help. Okay, we're just going to have to do this by eye. When you do it by eye, cut off a little less than you think you should. And then just keep trimming off little bits at a time until it's the right size. So I'm actually going to get out a pencil here. And 
This looks like a good place for a first cut. This is mostly just keep working on it until it fits. Could use a tiny bit more. And there you have it. There's your contact patch. It's just going to sit right in the chamber, or a little hop up window like that. Just try and center it. Now it's time to glue it into place. This is the real fun part. I recommend you get some tweezers. Got these nifty little curved tweezers here. Let me zoom in so you can get a better view of what I'm doing here. So I've got these little nifty little curved tweezers, but they're not going to help me. Okay. So now what you're going to do is you're going to actually glue this G-Hop on. First off, you're going to want to glue one side at a time. You're going to use some cayenne and acrylite. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, that's just super glue. That's what cayenne and acrylite. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but cayenne acrylite. I don't know, whenever I see weird words spelled out, I can always find a way to mispronounce them. But it's just super glue. Now some people say that this G-Hop modification doesn't work in guns shooting very high FPS, but I have used this in up to 460 FPS setups, so I can confirm that this does work for relatively high FPSs. Okay, so get out your toothpick. Get out your super glue. It's kind of like I said, just practice getting this bucking onto here in the right spot because the super glue does dry pretty fast. You're not going to want to like glue it on here or glue it on really far pushed down. Just kind of glue it on where it's you know, sitting just naturally where it's a little bit of a curve. You don't want to glue it down so that it's like already pushing down into your barrel or anything. I don't think I can get it to focus in on that, but I want to like put the glue on there and then be fumbling with it so just make sure you can get it on in a nice easy motion before you actually put the glue anywhere. Pretty sure you can get the glue off with just mineral spirits but I don't know how that'll affect your barrels coating if you're working with like a Mad Bull barrel. So try and get it right the first time. Just get a little bit of super glue out. Take your toothpick. You just want tiniest little bit of super glue here. And you have to work fast because the super glue does dry quickly. Try and get it as straight as you can. If you don't get it on right, just pull it off, put it on again. There's not really enough super glue to mess up your hop up performance. So let this one side here sit for just a minute or two because it does dry pretty quickly. You can see it's already starting to dry. Okay, now that I've let this sit for a minute to dry, I'm actually going to put a little more super glue under here because I don't know that I put enough on. You don't really need that much, you just need to touch a little bit. 
and now go to the other side. Since this side's glued down, it makes it a bit easier to glue this side on. Just get it. Now, since this side's glued down, it makes it easier to glue this other side on. Make sure my camera's in frame. Just peel this side up. Get down your super glue. Just push it down into place. And there you have it. Got any excess super glue in there? Be sure to wipe it off. And there's your G Hop contact patch. Now I recommend letting this super glue sit at least overnight or for 24 hours before you put the outer bucking on it because you don't want to like super glue this thing together. So let's go ahead and let that sit for a little while. And the next day once your glue on your contact batch dries, you're good. That's all you have to do. You don't have to file it down or... I mean if you didn't cut off enough and it's like sticking out a little far you might want to file it down or something but that's why I call this Lazy Man's R-Hop because it just doesn't take the amount of modification to your contact patch that R-Hop does. You just cut it to size and glue it onto your barrel. You don't have to file it down at all. And now you just get your outer bucking. You find the spot on the inside of the bucking where the little ridge on it that fits into the groove under your barrel goes. Just put that on one side of the contact patch. So that ridge should be on one side of the contact patch and where the little lump inside your bucking used to be should be on the other side of the contact patch. So the bucking over the top of the contact patch is just the side of the bucking. It's nice and smooth so you're not going to push an uneven amount of the contact patch into your barrel. Now as far as troubleshooting goes, I've only had bad results on this setup if I used a subpar outer bucking. Because I originally thought if I'm just cutting down the insides of the outer bucking, you know, what's it matter what outer bucking I use. But if it gets bad compression, it's like if it was kind of an okay bucking, it was, you know, it was alright, it was passable as a normal bucking. When I put it into a G-hop like this, I find that it suddenly becomes a really bad, unusable bucking. BBs will just go all over the place. But so long as you use a good quality outer bucking that gets you a good air seal like I'm using the stock G and G green outer barrels. I've had good results with those for G Hop. I always get good results that way outperform the stock barrel. I mean stock hop up. Now as far as any specialty nubs like SCS or H nubs or whatnot go, I've never actually experimented with any of these in G Hop. The only nub I've tried out is just a normal nub that I glued a little filed down part of a Tamiya connector to. I didn't really notice much of any of a performance increase over just a normal nub. See, it's just glued a little bit of a tummy, 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 however that's supposed to be pronounced. Just glued that on the end of a normal nub. Didn't really notice any performance change over the standard nub. So go ahead and experiment with nubs. If you do, please leave me a comment because I'd really like to hear about it. I'm curious. Now as far as variations go, if you really wanted to, you probably could do an extended G-hop. You know, file down your inner barrel and just put a longer contact patch in there. I might actually try that sometime. Now how this compares to G-hop, uh, sorry, how this G-hop compares to R-hop, I don't know because I've yet to install R-hop in any of my guns or shoot a gun with R-hop, but sometime in the summer I'm going to put extended R-hop into my Type 97. And if I like that, I'll probably put extended R-Hop into my KCO2 as well. Maybe someday I'll make extended G-Hop just for the heck of it to see how it fares, but that's probably a ways off from ever happening. You Also, you can just treat this like any other bucking. You can go ahead and put some Teflon tape around it or floss mod or whatever gets you better compression. Whatever you like to do, or you could just put it into your gun like that. If it doesn't fit into your hop-up chamber, that means you probably have a little bit left to cut off of where the hop-up mound used to be, or the ridge or something. But otherwise, if it's flat, it should fit into your hop-up chamber just as easy as any other bucking goes. And really, I guess that's about it. 
I hope this helped you guys, and I hope you learned something. I hope you try out G-Hop, and you like it. Take care.